Hey, Mechatronic students. In this video, we're going to be talking about knurling. It's going to be a relatively short video. Uh, so knurling is uh, kind of creates a little bit of a grip on a turn surface. So we'll jump right into the details. What is knurling and how to get it set up? So <coughs> on the lathe, I've got a uh, knurling cutter here and it's got a couple of surfaces here. This is actually going to push into the stock and form a little bit of a, a diamond grip. So if you've ever purchased like a maglite flashlight, you would have seen uh, a knurled surface on something like that. So uh, let's get it set up here. We simply put it in and <coughs> put it into the tool post, make sure that it is square to the stock. That's been done already. And then uh, we want to make sure in this particular model that both wheels are spinning. So it's got two separate little wheels on here. And in order for this to be at the right height up and down, uh, we basically just lightly feed it in. And once it engages, we want to see that the top wheel, and I'm kind of using uh, feel here, Looks like the top wheel's engaging first and then the bottom wheel's engaging. So I'm going to loosen up my tool post and in adjust this a little bit. Now I'll bring this in and check its rotation. Okay, now I'm getting both the top and bottom wheels are engaged and I like it. So this is going to put a lot of pressure. It's not a cutting action. It's actually forming some uh, bumps and ridges on here. So it's going to put a lot of force in against the part in that direction. So we want to make sure that we're chucked up uh, pretty close to wherever we're doing the knurling uh, to, get f to get the best results. This is something that's done at a relatively low speed. So I'm going to set the lathe up for 70 RPMs. And we'll go ahead and start. We're basically just going to push the cross slide into the part until we start to see a knurl. Then we just run it back and forth. So we're just going to put a little bit more force on the cross slide until we start to see a knurl pattern. And then we can just feed across the part. And those wheels should engage. And we should get a nice uh, knurled edge so I'm just going to go up to the edge of that part and kind of work my way back. The handle's pretty hard to turn right now because we've got a lot of side loading action that's happening. Okay, and there we go. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So knurling is a pretty simple process and it can give like a, a decorative or a gripped edge. And we can keep going with this if we want to make it a deeper or more pronounced knurl. Um, right now, it's it's not bad. It's just kind of there. Um, so it's up to you guys how deep you want to make the knurl. So I'm going to go ahead and push the cross slide in a couple more thousandths of an inch. And then just drag the carriage across to deepen that knurl across the part. But we do want to keep it engaged this whole time. So I never actually released it. So we want it to track and basically once it starts, we want it to just stay in its track. Okay, there we go. I'm digging that a little bit more. So I'm going to call that the final knurl. And we'll just back up from here. And you guys can see the end result. I think uh, I'll go ahead and just part this right off. We'll call that a finished part with uh, some threads and a knurled surface to it. Let's see. I might want to just pop a couple more things in here. Um, uh, let me see. So we will part the tool. I'll get the part partially started and then I'm going to trim a, a chamfer on each end of this. So we're going to start parting and again, I could part at a bit faster speed, but this isn't bad. We're going to go right up to that knurled surface. I don't have an exact dimension in this case. Hey, 
Again, if you're using the parting tool, it must be square to the part. Okay, so I'm going to stop the part early. And I want to create a little bit of a chamfer on each end of this part, on each end of the knurl. So we're going to go ahead and bring it in here with a uh, actually using the threading tool, just the edge of the threading tool to create a little bit of a chamfer here on the beginning and end of the part. Okay, so I just broke that edge a little bit. Then I'll go back and go ahead and cut this off. And I think I'm going to crank the speeds up when I do this. Because it could be parted quite a bit faster. So I'm going to go to 300 RPMs. And get my parting tool back in the track where it was. There it is. Got it lined up. We'll go ahead and fire this up. And I always like to do the parting with a steady drip of oil just to help lubricate it. All right, she's getting close to being all the way cut through. I'm just gonna let it fall. There it is. So the part snapped off. And uh, with a little bit more cleanup, we can take care of all the details there. But uh, we've got a nice knurled edge, a thread cut, and that's a good looking part from the lathe. So until next time, guys.